Hi, my name is Vanita Mohamedil and I'm a space operations engineer focused on human spaceflight and robotics. And today I wanted to tell you about a really exciting mission that is exploring the solar system and about space weather forecasting. So here are a few of ESA's current missions and at the top here is SOHO. And this is the Solar Heliospheric Observatory, which is a joint ESA and NASA project. And it was launched in 1995 to study the sun, so from its deep core to the outer corona, which is heated to over a million degrees Celsius, and to investigate where the solar wind is produced and how it accelerates. Um, and it does this by studying seismic waves that are produced in the turbulent outer shell of the sun, and these appear as ripples on its surface. So together with ESA's cluster mission, which the edge is down at the bottom here, um, SOHO has been operating for over 20 years and it's studying the Sun-Earth interaction. So right now it's situated about 1.5 million kilometres out um, on the sunward side of the Earth where it enjoys an un uninterrupted view of the Sun. So every day it sends amazing images down to scientists on Earth from which we learn about the Sun's nature and its behaviour. So apart from learning the su about the Sun, it's also a tool in discovering comets. And even though it wasn't designed to do so, it's actually discovered thousands of comets and around half of all of the comets that we know about today. Um, and a new one is found on average every two to three days, which is really exciting. Um, and many of those comets were actually discovered by amateur astronomers through downloading images from the SOHO website. Um, and about 70 people globally, representing 18 different nations around the world, have found comets that way. Um, and you can do that yourself as well if you'd like to. Um, but more importantly, experts around the world use SOHO images and data to help predict bad space weather which affect our own planet Earth. Um, and the mission is actually revolutionising our, our ability to forecast space weather. Um, and it right now gives up to three days notice of any Earth directors disturbances. And it plays a leading role in the early warning system for space weather. Um, and that's important for us here on Earth, but also for astronauts in space. Um, so the Sun by celestial standards is actually a relatively stable star, but explosive events on the Sun can blast particles to high speeds which can cause intense radiation storms. Um, and these uh, mild eruptions from the sun can cause, aur cause auroras that you might see in the sky, but more violent eruptions are actually able to disrupt our power grids, um, which cause blackouts, which has been, um, which happened actually before on Earth in Quebec, and it caused a major power failure and blackout there. Um, and also disables spacecraft and affects space communication, which we don't want, obviously. Um, so space weather forecasting is also important for astronauts on board the space station as well, and especially during spacewalks um, when they're outside the space station and in the future for long duration missions to the moon. Um, so we need that advanced warning of radiation storms from missions like SOHO to give astronauts time to take cover um, and also allow satellites and spacecraft operators to take protective measures. Um, so here on Earth, Earth, Earth magnetic field around us helps exposure um, to prevent the exposure to solar particle events. But as space exploration leads humanity outside of our protective magnetic cocoon to explore the moon and Mars in the next few years, um, this and other methods of space weather forecasting are going to become increasingly important as we go on.